Hi, and welcome to this Java object files. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. So as always, welcome and thank you for being here. My promise to you is here we're going to take a journey of the Java object files like you've never seen before. It'll be full of fascination and amazement. And of course, you'll learn new and valuable skills out of this. So let's begin. Uh, what is a Java object file? First, first question. So before we talk about the Java object files, let's give a review. We've looked at, at text files, and we know that text file is in human readable format, and we, we saw how we could write and read text files in Java. We also looked at binary files. We know that in Java you can write and read all the various primitives uh, to and from a file. Well, here, a Java object file, a little bit different, it's going to use what's called object serialization. And if you use object serialization, that means you can write and read Java objects uh, directly. And th this is actually pretty cool. So, that, so there's no need to convert. Uh, if you've got an object, there's no need to convert it to a text file or a binary file. You can literally write the object direct to the file. Now, the important point here is you have to implement this java.io.serializable. And by making it serializable, it means you can uh, serialize means write out uh, basically in a serial format, one after the other. And so this, uh, if we implement, for example, a student and we wanted to write this out, we would say implements java.io.serializable. So notice this is an interface and you have to implement this interface on any class that you want to participate in this uh, job, Java object file output. So uh, by doing this, you can store your object uh, e either on the disk or ship it across the network as well. So here's what we've got. How we're going to demonstrate this is the java.io uh, object output stream. So we'll create an object output stream. And notice, like we've seen previously, uh, we'll have a java.io file output stream. So basically, we take a file output stream and we put it into this object output stream. Now once we've done that, suppose we create an employee. Here I have an employee, say John Doe and one, two, three. Once I've got that employee, if I want to write that out, I just say my object output stream, write object. So very, very powerful. Just by saying write object, it will write out the complete contents of that object uh, to, uh, to wherever the object output stream is, which in this case, is to a file called myfile.dat. Now you can also go the opposite way, so you can do an object input stream. So notice here, java.io object input stream. Again, you give it your file input stream. And the amazing thing here is once you've given that, you can say do ois.readobject, and it'll read the object. Now notice when we read in the object, since it's literally reading in an object, we need to cast it to say, well, Although we're reading in an object, what we want it to be is an employee object. So that's why you see we're putting that casting there in, in open and closed parentheses of employee. Uh, make sure that we've cast this object to an employee. So let's do a code demonstration to show this. We'll first write out the Java object. So let's begin by creating an employee.java. Uh, notice that line one, the public class employee implements java.io serializable. So here you know that this has the ability to be written out. If you don't implement that interface, uh, then this could not be written out. Uh, but we're going to say, yep, we implement it. Uh, notice we're going to have some private data, uh, lines two and three, a, a name and a number, just a string and an int. And of course, we'll have a constructor at line five so we can construct that. And then at line 10, notice we'll have a two string so I can display the output uh, that comes um, when I need to show the contents of the employee. So in our main, at line 85, we'll go ahead and create a new employee. So notice I just say new employee, it'll be John in 123. Also at line 87, I'm going to have a file name called emp.dat for data. And then at line 88, I create this Java IO file output stream, giving it my file name, so the imp.dat. And then, of course, the key one for us is at line 89, we create an object output stream. Now, once we've got this object output stream, notice at line 91, 
I do an object output stream dot write object. And so at that point, it would write this out. In fact, I'm, I probably should have shown one more line of code there. Well, it looks like I didn't show it here, but the oos.close. So once we write it out, we would also want to, to close it. Uh, so you could add that line to your code. Uh, notice uh, in our screen output, when I do an ls-l, we see that the number of bytes in this file is 77. And then when I do an inf a file on imp.dat, notice it does recognize this is a Java serialization uh, file. So it does know that we've got a Java file and it's got data inside of it. If you wanted to see inside of it, we could use our hex dump. And notice with the hex dump dash C, we uh, see that we've got various information. You, you don't have to worry about the contents of that. It's, it's how it stores it internal. Uh, but it does show you that it's a binary format. Uh, in this case, the binary format is the object uh, that's being stored there. Well, if you can store it, you probably want to read it back. So here what we do is at line 95, we're going to create a file input stream. So we give our file input stream with our file name. And notice at 96, we're going to have an object input stream. So we create a new object input stream using that file input stream as the, the file we want to open up. And then at line 98, we do a try because we know there could be something missing here. But we're going to say we're going to try to go to our object input stream and how about read an object? And so it will read the object. Notice again, we're having to typecast. We're casting it to employee because it, this can read any object, but the object we want to cast it to is an employee object. So at line 99, we have the employee. Uh, when I go to line 106, I mean 105, notice I go ahead and close it. And then at line 107, I actually print out the contents of employee. We know we did a two string on that, so you can see there on, on the bottom right, it says the employee, um, it shows us the name of the class, uh, and then the name, John, and then the number, one, two, three. So in summary, we're seeing that doing the Java output file, uh, it, this object output stream is how we can, can send things out, and then we can read them back in by using an object input stream. Uh, very, very powerful technique because you can take uh, your objects that have been created as part of your application. You can now actually write those out and read them back in. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.